Just a quick video today. I recently replaced this. It's the cooler from a Lenovo T580. Um, it's not particularly special in any way, uh, but the fan bearing is bad and the fan is permanently attached to the rest of the cooler. And so to replace it, you've got to pull the whole thing out and replace it with a, with a replacement part. Not a huge deal. It's certainly better than the whole laptop going in the trash. Um, but the upside of that is it means that I can cut this one up and it doesn't actually matter. So there's four main parts of this. We got the cold plate or the hot plate that actually contacts the CPU, uh, the heat pipe, which is this lovely copper color, the fan, which is the part that's actually bad. You can see it's super thin, super low profile, um, and the fin stack, which is the actual exhaust of the exhaust of the laptop. And it's nothing. There's nothing super special about this. It's not a. It's not particularly beefy or anything. It's kind of wimpy, actually, to be perfectly honest. Um, but what I want to focus on for this video is the copper heat pipe. So the heat pipe is designed to move heat from the hot CPU over to the fin stack so that it can be radiated out of the laptop. But what does that actually mean? Like moving heat, how do you move heat? It's not something you can pick up and pick up and carry. Well, nature always wants to reach equilibrium. And if one end is always being cooled, that's this end, and the other end is always being heated, that's this end, logically, in order to reach equilibrium, uh, the rules of nature want to move the heat to make it even along the whole length of the cooler. And obviously, constantly heating and cooling both ends means that the heat energy is constantly moving across. This has to be done very, very quickly as computer components get very hot, <laughs> like really hot, hot enough to boil water, cook steak, all of that. And they also fail when they get too hot. And so we want to make sure that this heat pipe is extremely good at moving the heat. And what that means is this heat pipe has to be extremely thermally conductive. But what does thermally conductive mean? I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it means it transports heat very well, <laughs> or conducts heat very well. In effect, it is the exact opposite of an insulated flask, like this one that Dell, of all companies, sent me unprompted, uh, which uses a vacuum inside. It uses two, two bottles, one inside of the other, with a vacuum between them to uh, keep whatever's inside it cool. Uh, and it's USB rechargeable for some reason. But, so this is the opposite of that. Let's put that down, down there. Of course, copper, which is what it's made of, is an obvious choice, but with a thermal conductivity of about 384 watts per meter Kelvin, it isn't actually enough on its own. We need to augment and supercharge the heat transfer characteristics. And that is where this heat pipe design comes in. It may be hard to believe, but inside here, inside this tiny, thin, razor thin piece of copper there is actually liquid and that's why it's called a heat pipe <laughs> with the liquid and all the various other things instead of a thermal conductivity of 384 watts per meter kelvin this has a thermal conductivity of over 10,000 watts per meter kelvin and i'll demonstrate that in a second because it is wild Heat pipes like these work by rapidly evaporating and moving, physically moving, what they call the working liquid from the hot end to the cold end as a gas. So it evaporates here, it moves along here, condenses here, and that is how it transfers the heat so quickly. And then when it's condensed here and turns back into a liquid, it moves back through the pipe with capillary action, because as we'll see later, there is kind of a fuzz, there's, a, it, there's lots, of, lots of surface area there for the liquid to actually move back through capillary action, which is another rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> In a moment, I will grab my knife and I'm gonna cut this open. But uh, before that, before destroying it, I wanted to demonstrate just how wildly effective these are. And for that, I'm gonna be comparing it to this piece of steel, which is about the same length and definitely isn't just a gigantic screwdriver. Steel has a very low thermal conductivity, even compared to regular copper. It's about 50 watts per meter Kelvin. Now what we're gonna be doing to demonstrate the differences between these two is use a candle, a tea light, to heat one end while I touch the other end. 
and uh, we'll see how long it takes for it to become too hot for me to hold. Now don't try this at home, I am a qualified professional with absolutely zero experience, qualifications or skills. So, be warned, this is dangerous, you might burn yourself. So, as you can see, this is a real candle. And like I said, don't try this at home. We've got this big piece of steel, 50 watt hours per Kelvin. Sorry, yeah, that's... <laughs> Ignore me, I can't speak. So I'm going to grab it about here where this piece of foam is on the, uh, on the uh, uh, heat pipe and we're going to hold it above the candle. And we'll see how long it takes for me to even feel the heat. Okay, and what was that? Like at least a minute? So. Let's just move my finger along here and see how long it is until I even feel any heat. Ow! Okay, so the heat only traveled like three or four centimeters. So I'll put that down there. Uh, now let's try the heat pipe. So this is going to be the same deal. I'm going to hold it here and put it above the candle. All right, let's hold it the other way or let's go the other way. So I'm going to put the candle over the hot end of the heat pipe and we'll see how long it takes to get too hot for me to touch. All right, I feel heat already. Getting warmer. <laughs> ouch, ouch. Ow. Ow. <laughs> and what was that, like 20 seconds? <laughs> So there you go, that is how effective these heat pipes are at moving heat. Okay, let's grab the knife and move on. Here I am, I've got my trusty Leatherman, and the reason for this crazy light setup is because I have this, which is a totally wild, really, really strong macro lens. So if I put my finger in the way of it, it's focused on where the table is, but if you, <laughs> if you can see, this is extremely close up. Uh, and it needs a lot of light to do this, which is why I have a giant light that's right there blowing out the image. So what we're going to do is pull out the knife. And you can see the edge of the knife is looks quite large in the macro lens. It's actually not. It's, it's a really sharp knife. Uh, so I don't know. This is obviously the first time I'm doing this because, well, obviously I've only got one of these things. Ah, dang it. <laughs> Did I not cut all the way through? So there's a, there's a cut in it. It's quite sturdy material. Hmm. I thought I'd be able to cut through it relatively easily. I'll tell you what, let's use another function of the, uh, of the uh, Leatherman and just slice right through it. There we go. That cut through it like butter. There we go. We can focus on this part. So now if I grab my knife again, we can... Okay, there we go. Maybe I finally got it. Where you'll be able to see the inside. I don't know if you can see that. It's... Can you see the... the the capillary action. So you can really see the fibers that uh, suck and wick the, the liquid all the way back up the heat pipe once it's, of, uh, once it's condensed on the cool, cool end. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Disclaimer. Like I said at the beginning, I have no training and that's why I do things the way I do. Wow, look at that. It is so intricate and detailed in there. So many little fibers. I slice it at this end. There goes the fan. 
I'm going to try and slice it along the edge. There we go. That's a better look. So there are all the wicking fibers for the capillary action. And as you can see, they are extraordinarily small. Let me just get the tip of my pocket knife blade in for a, for a bit of scale reference. This is the kind of size we're dealing with. And that is why it burned my fingers after I only had it on the fire for like 20 seconds or something. And that is how your computer stays cool. Well, there you have it. Now you've seen the inside of a heat pipe and you know why oh, big fancy heat sinks and coolers have so many of them on there. Can you see this one has, what, six? Yeah, six heat pipes going through this enormous dual fan X99 cooler that I used to use. I hope I have helped shed some light on how a PC cooler works and maybe I'll do one on water cooling if, I don't know, I ever get around to using water cooling in any of my computers. Um, I had fun making this video, especially the part where I cut my thumb on a piece of sh uh, on a piece of razor sharp copper that I sliced up. But on the on the upside, I got to use my cool macro lens that is so difficult and annoying to use that I hardly ever do it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, uh, and if you like this kind of lower key style of content where I'm not driving out 120 miles to go see something or bringing in a guest, do let me know. Uh, I enjoy just typing out nonsense and, in a script and then performing it to camera. And bonus if I can do something like light a candle on fire and, and uh, hold a heat pipe and burn my thumb and things like that. So I appreciate your feedback and I will see you next time.